Pastor, Pastor Elmo. Hey, let, him, let us receive him at this time. Amen. Certainly the Lord is good. And he's worthy of all praise. Those hands have our light. Let's give the Lord a good rousing. That's the people for the Lord. It's so good to be You may take your seat. Yeah, I don't, I don't need that. That's, you know, the Lord. Come on, God. That's it. Right about it. That's who we. That's, it. that's who we give praise to, right? Amen. Amen. And we'll thank you for you, sir. Yeah, God bless you. <laughs> Tell your neighbor, good to see your neighbor. Good to see your neighbor. You can tell the one in the back, the one you didn't speak to this morning. Tell the one in the back, it's good to see you. Uh-huh. Amen. Yeah, today is a good day. To all of our visitors, God bless you. Second and third and fourth time visitors. After that third time, see that fourth time, we grab you. We grab you. Yeah, yeah, good to see you. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. <laughs> if you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. What? If you're happy and you know it, then you really ought to show it. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. Don't remember. <laughs> if you're happy and you know it, stomp your feet. If you're happy and you know it's off your feet. If you're happy and you know it, then you really ought to show it. If you're happy and you know it's off your feet. If you're happy and you know it, shout hooray. Hooray! Well, y'all from Pimmer Rock. I don't be from Pimmer Rock. If you're happy and you know it, shout hooray. If you're happy and you know it, then you really ought to show it. If you're happy and you know it, shout hooray. Hooray! If you're happy and you know it, do all three. Hooray! If you're happy and you know it, do all three. Hooray! If you're happy and you know it, then you really ought to show it. If you're happy and you know it, do all three. Now that's from the rock. That's from the rock. That's from the rock. Yeah. Amen. The Lord is good. Yes. The Lord is good. Yes. What a wonderful day. Yes. If you have your Bibles, would you turn to the Gospel according to St. Luke? And while you're turning to St. Luke, we want to remind all leaders that on Wednesday, Bible class is for you. All leaders. Leaders. All leaders. So it won't be the general Bible class for everybody. Wednesday, August 30th, just the leaders are meeting. Amen? Amen. Stand to your feet. Luke chapter 4. Luke chapter 4. Are you there? Yes. I'll read two verses. Verse 28. I'll read from the easy read version. Easy read. When the people in the synagogue heard this, they were very angry. Verse 29. They got up and forced Jesus to go out the town. That town was built on a hill. They took Jesus to the edge of the hill to throw him off. I'll read 30. But he walked through the middle of the crowd and went 
away in the hand of Jesus. Our Father, our God, we thank you for your word. Would you anoint us afresh and give us what's needed for the hour? Take not thy spirit from us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. When the people in the synagogue heard this, they were very angry. They got up and forced Jesus to go out of the town. The town was built on a hill. They took Jesus. They took Jesus to the edge of the hill to throw him off. But he walked through the middle of the crowd and went away. I want to just speak to you for a few moments this morning from this thought, not wanted. Not wanted. Could you turn to your neighbor and say, not wanted? Not wanted. Not, not, not wanted. Not wanted. Not wanted. Not wanted. Let's say it like this. Let me add something. Needed, but not wanted. Uh, Wise, have you ever felt needed? But not wanted. Husbands, have you ever felt needed? But not wanted. You you need me. But you don't want me. I'm going to see in a little while what denomination sits in here this morning. I'm going to see. <laughs> Catholic Church, Baptist Church, which one we got this morning? Which one? <laughs> Need it, but not yes, yes. want it. All right, now. <laughs> You're the one. That's getting the call to meet the need. You're the one. You're the one that's lending the money. You, you did say you wanted to be a lender, not the borrower, right? Uh -huh. You're the one. You're the one that's praying for others. You're the one. You're the one that's running around trying to get things done. You're the one. You're the one that's making sure everything is in order. You're the one that's covering everyone else's mistakes. You're the one. You're the one that's doing what needs to be done. You're the one that everybody depends on. You're the one. You're the one that's faithful. Are you in here this morning? You're the one trying to keep your marriage together. You're the one. You're the one. You're the one making sure the children are fed. You're the one that's giving 110%. You're the one. You're the one sitting in therapy trying to figure this mess out. You're the one. You're the one about to have a mental breakdown. You're the one. You're the one carrying the Lord. You're the one. You're the one. You're the one. You're the one that's going home. You're the one that's coming to church. You're the one that's on the job. You're the one that's among family, friends, and relatives that need you but don't want you. That, that's for somebody in here. Hmm? Truth be told, you need me. But I'm not sure you want me. There's a difference. 
Tell somebody there's a difference. There's a difference between being needed and being wanted. Somebody needs to say that again until we get it in our spirit. Say it in the atmosphere. There's a difference between being needed and being wanted. You remember in the book of Genesis, I'm getting there, uh, Leah. Leah, the book of Genesis. Leah had a sister named you see, Leah was needed more than wanted. Leah, she found herself in a love triangle with, between her, her sister, and her father's nephew, Jacob. Laban, Leah's dad, promised Jacob that if he served him, you know it, seven years, then Jacob could marry his younger Daughter Rachel, but upon the night of consummation, the trickster, Jacob, was tricked. The supplanter, the Bible calls it, was supplanted. What that means, supplant, supplanter? One who wrongfully or illegally seizes and hold, holds the place of another. Or one who illegally occupies property to which another has legal claim. That's what Jacob did to his brother, now Jacob is tasting some of his own medicine. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Jacob was given Leah first because of a need. Say need. Need. Was given Jacob first. Um, Jacob was given Leah first because of a need of her greedy father instead of Rachel, whom Jacob wanted first. There's a difference between being needed and being wanted. Leah became the needed one but she wasn't wanted. Jacob wanted Rachel. Almost done. Oh, what about being a part of a church ministry that needs your gifts but doesn't want you. Wow. Being a part of a church ministry that needs your money, that needs your ideas, that needs your ministry, but you are not wanted. Not wanted. This need suggests that your importance is based on what you can do rather than who you are. It's likened unto our text today. Hmm. And you'll see it if you can. The Bible class, you, you know, Bible class wins is at 7 o'clock here at the Brilliant Queen of Rock Baptist Church. Leave us your miracles, but we don't want you. We need the miracles, but we don't need you, Jesus. The text, the people in the hometown of Jesus called Nazareth was a small community of Jewish believers. This small community of Jewish believers was well aware of who Jesus was as the carpenter's son. The truth of Jesus' conception, the way Mary got pregnant by way of the Holy Spirit and not by Joseph, that truth was hidden from the community. Community saw Jesus' upbringing as no different than anyone else's. The community, they were eyewitnesses of Joseph's son growing up named Jesus. Jesus, the carpenter's son. Jesus who grows up right around the corner. Jesus who has taken the skills of his earthly father, Joseph, and become a carpenter himself. Jesus who reads 
scripture in the synagogue. Jesus, who is a good child, Jesus, the young man that everybody wants to be like. Jesus, the one who caused no trouble in the community. But when the ministry of Jesus, at around 30 years old, when his ministry began and when his prophetic assignment began to manifest the Jesus of the community. The Jesus of Nazareth was no longer wanted. How dare you be more than what others think you should be. The ministry of Jesus begins watch it and the mood and the tone of the community begins to shift. He starts to do ministry. He assigns 12 men to accompany him throughout the territory to become fishers of men. He heals the broken hearted. He brings deliverance to those that are captive. He recovers sight to the blind. He preaches the gospel to the poor. But when he comes back to his community and stands watching in their synagogue, say their synagogue, yes. When he stands in their synagogue reading from the book of Isaiah, or Isaiah not, which by the way was a book that was given to him to read. That's it. When he stands reading Isaiah 61 which says the spirit of the Lord is upon me. This is Jesus Christ standing in the synagogue reading. He said the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the broken hearted, to preach deliverance to the captives and recovery of the sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. When Jesus announced that he was the very fulfillment that was actually reading the words that he was reading out of the book of Isaiah, he's telling them, it's not really about Isaiah, but these words that I'm really Reading is really about me when he stood and made that proclamation that really he was the word made flesh in that very presence. Things in the community begin to shift. As soon as you stand up, don't be surprised with things in your life. And people around you sitting on your roll begin to shift. And when you really take time and read the text, Jesus knew what they would say and how they would feel. In other words, what they were telling him in the text, well, if you've done all of these things works and miracles in other places, what you do them here in Nazareth. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But he wouldn't do it. Because Jesus knew they didn't want him. They rejected him. Look what he says in verse 24. Verily I say unto you. I hope your Bibles are still open. No prophet is accepted in his own country. And when he said that, the wonder of his glorious words to them earlier in the beginning was soon turned into wrath. 